Hello viewers, and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. Uh, today, I think we're going to bang out the openings of these other two areas. So, <sighs> neither of these missions has anything really compelling available for loot. Uh, no deeds, no trinkets that actually mean anything. Uh, but we do need portraits to upgrade the guild. So I think that puts the wheeled in over the cove. Really, the busts are just not uh, not super useful to us right at this moment. So we're bringing these ones. I've gone ahead and given them full trinket equips because it's a short mission. We're not going to run out of inventory space. <clears throat> not a lot of not a lot to talk about here. Let's just get in there and kill some monsters. Uh, it is the wheeled, so let's bring an extra shovel. Cause man, I hate the wheeled. <clears throat> this will probably be good enough. Let's just get right into it. Let's not spend five minutes screwing around in the town screens, huh? <clears throat> the antiquarian is ready, and I'm interested in bringing her on more stuff, but I want the next thing I bring her on to be longer. The soil, stopping all good life from these groves. I want to get a chance to play with her camp skills and stuff. Alright, zoomed me way in. Nature herself, a victim to the spreading corruption. This is why we bring extra shovels. Back to the pit. That really sounds different. I, I wonder if they just, like, lost their recording presets between sessions or what happened. Because the, the lines that... Wayne recorded at different times sound way different. Executed with impunity. Another right. one falls. Straightforward. This expedition at least promises success. Oh right, you're supposed to have anti-venom for this, huh? Uh yeah, you. Cause if a crusader gets slow draw, um, there's a chance when you interact with that thing to get the negative trait, slow draw. Uh, if a crusader gets afflicted with slow draw, what's it gonna do? Make him go last er? Damn, everybody's rolling low. We actually have, um... Oh, I should have. I should have done that so that the crusader could... Yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah, because then the crusader fails to get his kill, and then we have two live enemies instead of one live enemy, and bad things happen. Uh, if we finish these guys off right away, there's a pretty good chance that they'll just produce more slimes to fill the, uh, or that the big guy will just fulfill, produce more slimes to fill the void. So we're gonna try to wear these guys down a little more evenly. I'm always saying how it's a bad idea to do that, but uh, these enemies take a little bit of a little bit of consideration. We have some stun charms. I'm just fishing for a little a uh, little bit of good luck here. Honestly, they both are about a 50% chance to stun him after considering their charms, so it's not like it's terribly unlikely. Alright, I think we're going to be able to get there this turn. Although, of course, it would be nice if uh, the Bounty Hunter weren't stunned at this moment. Yeah, in fact, we did not get there, but this guy chose not to do anything meaningful. I'd like to see if we can finish him off with the Vestal. Yeah. A good judgment, you know. Does she have to go last? There we go. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? We'll come back for it. You don't want to do that without spending a shovel. A handsome reward for a task well performed. And I do not feel comfortable spending our remaining shovel 
with this much wield in front of us. Uh, so, if we focus on the slimes first, we're going to take a bunch of stress damage. If we focus on the cultists first, we're going to get a bunch of extra slimes conjured, probably. It's a bit... Uh, it's a bit rough, but I do think that it's worth lowering our incoming stress damage as much as possible. Also, I've completely forgotten to, uh... Wow, good shot. I've completely forgotten to fix our Bounty Hunter skills, so he still doesn't have finish him. That's uh, a bit of a silly mistake on my part. Could you guys please start hitting above the uh, halfway mark of your damage range? Yeah, this is a tremendous amount of stress that we've just gained. I just, I do not want this thing producing more, uh... Really? Yeah. Regardless of whether or not it hits, it makes the, uh, the big plasm. That's very annoying that this guy survived basically due to a uh, three or four long series of incredibly terrible rolls. It's really not not such a crazy thing to stun this guy. His stun resist is only 75%, and in both cases, we're dealing with 120% stuns. It makes sense, you know, for it to miss occasionally, but not for it to miss every time. Be gone, fiend. There you go, you remembered how to actually hit people. Alright, so, a lot of comically terrible rolling going on here, uh, causing this fight to last a lot longer than it should. Very important that this thing goes down before it decides to make a bunch more slimes. Uh, we took a bunch of stress and a bunch of damage from what is ultimately actually a very easy fight. So that's a little, a little frustrating. No luck on the scouting ahead, which causes that to happen. Okay. So, somewhere between two and four more battles, it looks like. Party is looking shockingly ragged already. You know, I still haven't done that math I said I was going to do. So I don't exactly know um, how many missions we have to run. How many failures we can afford. That kind of stuff. Okay, this isn't too bad. That minimum damage. Right. Another abomination cleansed from our lands. 
Really, the spider's the only dangerous one. I know this is a little bit unsporting, but I really would like to get a Vestal heal off here. Okay, not bad. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Okay, this isn't so bad. These guys are not nearly as as scary if you're uh, if they're accompanied by enemies that don't mark. And these cultist witches do mark on higher difficulties uh, because their stress attack applies a mark, but. As we face them here, this shouldn't be too bad of a fight. Four. That's just embarrassing. Uh, I don't know. Stun one of them. Doesn't really matter which one. They're identical. Of course not. Destroyed. Hey, don't you don't have to get bummed out when she says nonsense to you. You know you aimed. You know that was a good hit. So the enemies, um, the enemies inflict stress on this difficulty uh, in the same amounts that enemies in red tier missions in strict uh, red tier missions from the normal difficulty inflict stress. Uh, pretty much all the time, it looks like. I hope there's no scaling factor, or else the enemies in reds are going to be doing like 50 or 60 stress with each cast. To wanting to win, guys, come on. These nightmarish creatures can be felt. Get some reasonable loot, and of course, it turns out that there is another battle. Yep. Okay, not bad. Alright, these things have speed 8, which means that uh, they're all, all four of them are going to beat us on, uh, on the initiative check pretty much every round. Are you talking to the dog or his signature move? Are you talking about if his signature move is getting bit by a dog? Because that's not even a good insult. Annihilated. People are taking Bellicote's shit in situations where she's just like gibbering, man. That's not even good insults. Stand up for yourselves. The damage is a little scarier um, than it was in the in normal mode, but it's the stress. The stress seems to be much, much greater. I 
Also, I don't know if this is actually a thing of the difficulty mode, but it does seem that my heroes are, one, like, with incredible consistency, leaving things at 1 HP. It's a little frustrating. I can't believe we have to de-stress somebody after a short green. This is where this where this this difficulty mode is actually harder is it hits you right in the wallet. All right. Nothing uh nothing spectacularly great or bad. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. What about Fitz? What's Fitz at? 34. Hey, he's got his thing. He'll be fine. When I say his thing, of course, I mean uh, Absolution. Uh, we're still looking for a Houndmaster, by the way. I'd really like to get a Houndmaster or two. Uh, this could be more useful, you know, if we had a Houndmaster. Do I want to buy it anyway in anticipation? No, because first of all, I don't think it's that essential. And secondly, who knows when a Houndmaster will actually show up, right? We, we might be without one for quite a few weeks. Uh, the boss fight is still showing a not very fun trinket. Uh, it looks like this would be cool. Hey, an occultist trinket that increases stun chance, but you gotta remember that the occultist only has access to his stun when he's in the front two rows, which means uh, when he does not have access to his heal. All right, so who's coming with us on this mission? Reynold is staying home. He's already up to boss fighting level. We can just bring the other crusader. We don't have to disturb things too much here. Uh, Woodville. And... Actually, why don't we do this? You have your thing. You can just shoot people. So let's reorient him. You can use this from the third row, right? Oh, things in the cove have good bleed resist, though. Actually, we'll do like this, just in case we get swapped out of... Uh, Get swapped out of order. That'll help him get back in place in a way that might save somebody a turn. Alright, let's get equips. Oh, plus he has he has access to this thing. So he'll just get a bunch of bonus damage. The Crusader can take this thing that lowers speed since his speed is already garbage. And this other thing that lowers speed since his speed is already garbage. Oh, except that I want him to have a stun increaser. And then you can have a warrior's bracer, and this thing, and that leaves you getting this and that. Okay, makes sense. Honestly, I have to say that uh, we, we got a group of reasonable trinkets much more quickly in this game than we did in the, the last LP. What do you have? You have a tapeworm. Whatever, we'll live. We'll uh, we'll get that we'll get that fixed after. All right, let's open up the last region, and then we're really gonna do our best to stick to uh, longs from there. Yeah, should be good. <clears throat> longs and mediums and. Uh, Maybe never another short. We just have to. We have to get XP These as time efficiently as possible. All right, double drown thrall again. Not happy. Do not land that stun, son of a bitch. That's another thing. The, uh, the status effects that enemies put out seem to be very reliable on this difficulty. Really? Uh, 
Alright, now remember, these things have zero speed. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Everybody except our crusader has significantly more than that. Oh, no crit. Okay. There we go. That's how that fight is supposed to go. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. Okay, Photomania is a good one, in case you're not familiar with it. High torch equals low stress. Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. I mentioned before that um, I may I may need to actually go low light a little bit more frequently just to uh, to make sure we're getting money quickly enough. We don't have the time probably to do a tremendous amount of extra runs. Just seeing here. We can remove a negative trait with this, so I'm trying to figure out who has one that we'd really like to take off. Honestly, Fear of Eldritch is uh, both not a good thing to get locked in because uh, the Darkest Dungeon is all Eldritch monsters almost entirely. And secondly, it's not a very good thing for the dungeon that he's in right now, which is populated again pretty heavily with Eldritch monsters. All of the all of the fishy monsters are Eldritch, so don't you do it. The force of devilry indeed. Uh it would be cool if you didn't do stuff. Sadly, in green missions, spear fishing does not pull people forward. Ah. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them all. It doesn't actually matter for our purposes which of these guys is in front, so. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. Ooh. Well, if he's got to crit somebody, let it be the Vestal, right? She can shrug that stuff off pretty trivially. Alright, not bad. And hey, you know the Order of the Seasons. That's also impressive. You know, it sounds like I'm being kind of, uh, kind of a jerk there, but, you know, the level of education that we have, uh, that we expect everybody to have now is not necessarily something you could guarantee back in these days, in this fictional time and place. So good on him for understanding how the Gregorian calendar works, that's all I'm saying. Give them no quarter. Although I guess you could also argue that every summer is equally after a fall. Uh, I'm going to potentially come back to that. Uh, is this a party that can fight a shambler? Let's give it some thought as we move forward. Oh, hello! We're having quite a day. Man, Wicked Slash is way, or Wicked Slice rather, is way better than it used to be. It feels really powerful now. Okay, not bad. He was so startled that he exploded. Come on, your stun resist isn't that high. Damn it. Okay. Well, that is the uh, the least intimidating thing he could possibly do. And power. Wow. Well, I was going to stun that thing, but I guess we may as well just kill it. Unfortunately, our party's a little bit uh, slow, and so it looks like we're probably not going to get as many chances as I would like 
uh, to clear the field and then stun him before he gets to summon any more heads. Also, I think it's really bizarre that none of these things count as unholy. Uh, now let's just finish off this one. There's no reason to leave the healer alive. Alright. Your resist is 50%. My chance to hit is 120. Come on. There we go. I really shouldn't have taken that many tries. And now our leper will actually get to hit him. You gotta get some of that leper damage. Okay. And since he didn't summon a Vestal Head, he's pretty much doomed. We're going to be able to kill him before he gets his next turn, which means that he has no chance of uh, using Lifesteal, because our Highwayman here is very fast. Wow! Okay. Ow. Do we have a bandage? Alright, good. He guarded the wrong one. That's good for us. Shoot. Ah, uh, we weren't that likely to get a kill on the hit. Okay, wow. Alright, everybody just calm down. We cannot hit this thing. Holy crap, we're going to have somebody actually, uh, potentially die here. Right, number one. Number two, for, for Christ's sake, somebody hit him. They have seven dodge, by the way. Just seven. Okay. And somewhere around a 150% crit rate, it would seem. <laughs> Alright, let's all take a moment to recover. He's actually just gonna bleed through. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, how many rooms do we have left? Four? Sheesh. Well, we're definitely going to get dinged for stalling if we don't push this, but also the chances of me killing this thing on this attack, and thus this turn, are so low. Alright, good. I was hoping that that would injure but not kill. <clears throat> Alright. Which one is that? A trifling victory. Okay. Not bad. A victory, that's, a, that's a pretty okay trinket. You know, if you like damage and killing things. <sighs> things have gotten a tad harsh. No, 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 no. Okay, good. Keep that guy in place, which is to say out of place for a little while. Alright, our leper's health is actually, er, um, our leper's speed is actually not so low that he should always be going last, but everything has got higher speed than he does, so all the enemies. So he's going to end up going after all of them just often enough for it to be annoying. Alright. 
No, we should definitely finish this. I was gonna attack this guy because I thought I, you know, had an opportunity there. But no, preventing the blazing star is born. Preventing the stress cast is just way too important. Awesome. Can be felled. They can be beaten. So we can now bail at any time. If only treasure could staunch the flow of otherworldly corruption. All right. I am definitely not going to be fighting the Shambler if we don't get some healing. Or we don't get like, a significant amount of healing done. But it's possible if we get enough fights where we come out enough ahead. It's possible that we could, in fact, get to a point where fighting that Chambler is reasonable. I will say, I think it's, it's very unlikely. But I want to go forth and get loot, right? We certainly can't afford to not get all of the loot every time we go out. Alright, that's an okay person to cast Stress Wave on, I guess. One point for everybody. What is it, our birthday? He has to do this just to avoid something really unfortunate potentially happening. I don't want to be in a position where I have to heal him or else he might die at the beginning of his turn. And must you do minimum damage at a time like this when any other damage number would be lethal? Very annoying. Very annoying. Still trying very hard to find a way out of this that leads to me being able to fight a Shambler eventually. But uh, that kind of bullshit certainly not helping. Oh, now you do 15. This expedition at least promises success. Alright, let's see what the other curio in the hall here is. No scout, that's a real bummer. Okay, well, this fight should be relatively low damage at least. Oh, that was silly. We definitely should have attacked the one that um the one that hadn't yet taken his turn. Uh, it certainly seems like, in addition to the other effects that we're already aware of, the monsters um, hitting harder and everything, it certainly seems like the chances for their debuff skills to go off are much higher. We rarely see uh, resist on a stun or anything. Debuff chances might still be low. Oh, this is gonna suck. Yeah, I guess we're just gonna bail. There's not really a point in sticking around. Yep. Also, for some reason, we can't seem to hit anything. These monsters don't really have very much dodge. 13 is the highest we've seen on anything so far. Ugh. 
Now the game is specifically financially punishing us for staying in the dungeon. It's being quite clear about it. Okay, guys, come on. Your chances of missing really are not that high. Alright, well, we're unlikely to see a second um, battle in the same hallway. And... We know for a fact that there won't be a battle in the room. So we can at least push on as far as the room. Yes, yes, you're very impressive. We know, we know. Alright, we get to see... Okay, we can... Go out there and finish this off, yep. From becoming unwound. <sighs> I wasn't thinking about the fact that restoring him off of Death's Door over and over again had pushed us below the starvation threshold. And now we might actually lose a hero to starvation. Yep. Full of steel and war. Oh, what? That was weird. A little, a uh, little bit of a zip there in the animation. It's strange. Waiting to be spent. Uh, sure. Here, just eat this. And of course, he can't even disarm a trap. Okay. All right. Okay, come on. The game has a real thing about. Uh, things are driven back. The game is a real thing about, ah, I'm playing an animation, I have a, I have an effect I could do, you don't get to interact with stuff until I'm done. They could speed things up a lot if they fixed that. In particular, you see it in combat when people get, um, get hit by an attack that has multiple effects, like, for example, the, um, the maggot attack, Grave Nibble, which inflicts stress and also a stun. There's no reason that they can't show you whether or not the stun hits and show you the damage and show you the stress at the same time. Right? A glimmer of hope. They could very easily do that, and they don't. I imagine, for the sake of clarity, but it's, uh, it's annoying more than anything. Well, we got a Houndmaster. And his faithful beast, a bond forged by battle and bloodshed. Right, we should pick up a replacement leper, probably. What do we what do we not need that we have right now? What's level zero that we could afford to fire? Could get rid of a third vestal. Yeah, it's like third vestal or second arbalist. It's probably third vestal. Suffer not the lame horse, nor the broken man. McCray. Is that the name of the dude in Fallout who offers to teach you some some tips for hand-to-hand -hand fighting? Which game was that? Was that Fallout 1 or 2? There's definitely a dude named McCray in one of them that like teaches you, gives you some unarmed skill if you talk to him. The weird things that uh, would pop into my head. Okay, well, technically successful, but it sure felt like we got our asses kicked. Um, that'll be it for this episode of Darkest Dungeon. Come back next time when we... What is this? Wow. That's terrible. Isn't the Antiquarian heal one point? Like... Hold on, can we can we take this antiquarian into the guild and get a peek at what the next rank might be? No, we can't. We actually don't have the Yeah, let's Some buy that. Fall, and we may as well buy this. Uh Yeah. One to two, so this will be two to two, this will be two to three, this will be three to three. So at max rank, 
that skill is plus one or two points on the heal. Man, the Antiquarian's trinkets are garbage. Um, I don't think that you guys saw, but the green, I saw the green Antiquarian trinket as a reward on a quest that we didn't go on. Um, and I think it was... I think it was plus heals received. Basically, uh, we won't. We probably will never be equipping the antiquarian with the class specific trinkets, but she'll be a good carrier for utility trinkets, things like um, plus scouting trinkets or things that affect chance to be surprised. And it's nice to be able to have somebody who can carry those without, you know, there's no opportunity cost. Although you still do have the opportunity cost of uh, bringing the antiquarian over somebody who could just, you know, actually do a good job in combat. But, we need money. We'll always need money to some extent. Let's get people de-stressed a little bit here. Can we afford to upgrade these facilities? We can't. They're fine. They're doing a good enough job. Who else is high stress? Willicote is sitting at 44. She probably... <coughs> You know, I think she was pushed up really high, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, she um, she broke. And then we de-stressed her. But our de-stressing facilities are in such poor shape that they don't uh, they don't pull people down all the way. Okay, so. Rough day, but now all of the areas are open. We can actually, uh, we can actually get a real pick of missions in all of them now. We do need to stop doing the ruins. Uh, we no longer need to advance the ruins. Five is high enough, I think. So, um, we're going to, we're going to be strongly incentivized to catch these areas up so that we'll be able to get bosses to spawn efficiently. Um, if we spend a lot more time in the ruins, then these areas will be underleveled, and when we want to have access to their bosses for the purposes of getting early orange trinkets, we'll have to instead spend extra weeks leveling them up. So, we really do want to stop fighting in the ruins if we can avoid it, with the exception of the boss fights. So come back next time. I have no idea what it is that I'm going to end up doing here. But uh, it'll be something. Maybe it'll rule. It'll probably be fun to watch at least. If, listen, if you like watching me suffer and get upset as my heroes die horribly in ways that they should not, on missions that they should not, come back next time and watch me get upset as somebody loses their damn mind and then chews their own leg off in desperation to get away from us. And we'll see you then.